Broadcasting from under the roof of Marlins Park as we are ready for game time. Tonight, the second of three to start the week between the Colorado Rockies and the Miami Marlins. Reyes, the National League's leading hitter to this point, takes his swing. Next. Sandy Almanza, a right-handed native of the Dominican Republic, will be the starter. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, you want to know if this guy's one of the better pitchers in the league? Well, how about this? Batters are hitting under 200 against this guy for the year, so he's done a good job against both righties and lefties. And I'm looking for him to be just as dominant in this one. Leading Into the box the now, Colorado. Charlie Blackman. Center He'll get us started in this Charlie one under Blackman. the lights. Here's a high pop-up. Taylor waits on it. Looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. And a chance now to check out the visiting Colorado Rockies. Hero, how do they lock up a series victory here on the road? Yeah, you take a look at this lineup they're running out today. And they got their work cut out for them with the sinker baller on the mound on the opposition side. They're going to have to see the ball up. They're going to have to work the home plate umpire. Can't be given four to six inches off the inside half, or he's going to have a field day pounding that sinker in there. Should be interesting to see right out of the chute if he's got the good one or not. Here comes the first pitch. Hey! And he gets ahead with a sinker on the outside. Guys, this Marlins ball club, as they begin play here tonight, they dropped another one last time out, and in fact, they've won just twice in their last eight tries. Yeah, Maddie, this team finds itself with a huge lead, double digits right now, and climbing, playing really good baseball. Some people will say, oh, you don't want to have that big a lead. You start resting on your laurels. I, I, I look at it the other way, man. You've earned the right to kind of get some guys off their feet if the manager wants. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it. This team's focused and playing really good baseball. I would not worry about it. Keep pushing the throttle. So let's take a peek at the umpiring crew in this one. Behind the plate is Ricky Holiday. Hey, d -Row, you better be up there ready to swing with Ricky Holiday behind the plate, particularly on that high pitch. Yeah, and I, I don't like that, Dan. As an offensive player, that's the one pitch that you almost can't get to with a power guy on the mound. I'm okay when you give him a little bit on the corners. When you start giving north, it makes it super tough on the hitters. He throws him on the breaking ball that time. Daniel Murphy goes down for out number two in the top half. And that brings in the power hitting shortstop Trevor Story. And he enters play today, currently fifth in the National League batting race. Get out of here, Rocky. First pitch coming, here it is. And that one just missed outside. Here comes the 1 0. And a neck high fastball that time. Boy, he just looks locked in at the plate right now to me. His numbers in recent games have been very good, and those were two stone cold takes right there that put himself in a great hitter's count. And a hard sinker there, chopped foul at home plate. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Three up, three down for Colorado. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. Herman Marquez, the right-hander from Venezuela, gets the starting nod in this one. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Hey, this is a very unique pitcher. He is really tough to hit when runners get into scoring position, and that's one of the reasons why he doesn't give up many runs. We'll see if he can continue to do that in this one. Here's Starling Marte. It lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Leading off for the Marlins, center fielder, Starling Marte. Here's the first pitch to him. Right side, but it's going to be a foul ball. 
Now, boys, we take a look at the Rockies' starting play here tonight. Four and two over their last six games, including a win last time out. Yeah, Matty, I'm, I, I've been really impressed with this team, especially on the recent road trip to start to it. They're three and one after four games, playing really fundamentally sound baseball from offense to defense pitching. It's all coming together for this group. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Hit high and deep out to left field. And that's off the left field wall. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. That's what good hitters do. You get a pitch you like and you just explode on it. He blasted that one over the left fielder's head for an easy double. Standing in now, Chris Taylor, as he will take a fastball in there at the knees for strike one. Previous history with Herman Marquez, he's got five base hits in 19 tries. He also has one home run. Now the 0 1. A high fastball is in there. You know hats off to the pitcher right there. You got a great hitter at the plate. It's early in the count and he wanted to get ahead. Nice challenge pitch right there. Swing and a miss at one in the dirt. And he makes the throw to first. Taylor is retired and there's one away. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. Anybody catch your eye, Dan? Well, Matt, I'm going to be paying close attention to Starling Marte. He's really excelled against right-handed pitching this season, hitting over 300 against them coming in. So given the matchup he's faced with here, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him make some noise at the plate. So that brings up the always intense Matt Chapman. Good opportunity for him to add to his season RBI total here, which sits third best in the National League. First offering on its way. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Blackman is under it. He makes the catch, and the runner from second will tag and head for third. Well, he thought about tagging and moving up, but instead he's back to second. Right fielder, Ron Reyes. So here's the cleanup hitter, Franz Reyes. What a season he's having. Entering play, leading the league in two of the three triple crown categories. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Hit hard to third. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. But the recovery throw will be in time to first. Good job that time of not giving up on the play, and the inning is over. Marlins leave one. We are still scoreless. And that will bring up the speedy outfielder David Dahl. Took an 0 for 4 in the victory last night. Here's the first pitch to him. Missed with a slider. Missed with a breaking ball. Now, two, Takes a look at a strike over the inside corner. Strike. Hit hard to short. Gloved by Taylor. Throw to first will be in time, and there's one gone here to start the second. Check out the Miami Marlins on defense. And check out the left side of this infield. You think the pitching staff's not going to want to pitch the righties in to pull and the lefties away to go the other way to the left side? That's because everything's getting caught on the left side of this infield. Should be fun to watch. Here's Didi Gregorius. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. Comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. 
Goes down to get the sinker, and it's chopped fouled at the plate at strike one. No score here as we play inning number two. Hit hard towards center. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. And that certainly represents a career milestone. Hit number 1,000. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 1,000 isn't a milestone that's going to get everyone talking. But as an individual, you have to feel pretty good about it. He'll definitely be wanting that ball for his trophy case. Here's Ryan McMahon now. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. He'll come in with an average down at 230. Two home runs, 13 RBIs. The 1-0. Out of play off to the right. It's 1-1. One and one. The 1-1. One, one. And this is fouled at the plate. That's lifted the other way out to left. There to pull it in is Soler, and there are two away. Stepping in, Jorge Bonifacio. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Here's a slider to start things out, but it misses by a few inches or so. It's ball one. Ball and a strike. We got a ball, one strike. Gregorius leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. Little tardy on that swing as it's well wide of first. Curveball bounces, and this one gets away. And he'll make it into scoring position here with two away, as that'll be scored a wild pitch. Well, the intent there with that two-strike pitch was obviously to get him to fish for something he couldn't do a whole lot with, but there's the risk that comes with that as well. If you don't execute or your catcher can't handle it very well, you give up three bases. A swing and a miss at a sinker. The strikeout retires the side. Inning is over. One left for Colorado. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. In is Jorge Soler. He'll start us out here in the home half of the second. Left fielder, Jorge Soler. Here comes the first pitch. Swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. Some guys are great low ball hitters, but most guys, especially guys with pop like this, they're hunting for the ball belt high and above. So that was a nicely spotted fastball down in the zone. A great job of changing speeds there. It's 0-2. Hey, I love the aggressive nature this guy's pitching with. He's got focus. He's commanding the fastball, really being aggressive right now. A lot different than his last start where he took a loss and seemed timid and scared to attack the zone. To third. And that's out yeah. number one. All right, guys, so here's how the Colorado Rockies right. set up defensively. And let's take a look at outfielder David Dahl, another guy who profiles not only in center field but can cover both corners. Speed is his game, and he's only going to continue to get better. Standing in, Garrett Cooper. He went hitless last night in a game where his guys could push across only one score. First delivery to him on the way. And he fouls this one off. The wind up and the 0 1. To the left side, but it's well foul. A great swing right there. I know the ball foul, but he absolutely laced that pitch right there. He's just got to stay back a little bit longer. 
set to deliver on nothing in two. Here it comes. Check his swing there. Did he go around? No, says the first base umpire. Ball one. Bottom of the second here with no score. And he held up in time, but it's strike three called, and there are two down. For me, check swings are right there next to bang bang plays at first as the most difficult calls for an ump to make. Taking a look at show motion, the batter doesn't appear to hold up enough, so I think the call was right. And that'll bring in the middle infielder, Cattell Marte. So go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. 281, the average entering play. Nine homers and 34 driven in. The 0 1 pitch. This is pulled into right. Bonifacio will get there and he puts it away to retire the side. 1 2 3 go the Marlins. We'll move to the third with no score. At the plate, Tony Walters, as we are all set to begin the third inning in this one. Tony. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And that one stayed too low, apparently. A tough sinker on the inside corner. Good looking sinker on the inside corner. Curveball that time, not even close. The 2 2 is laid off, and the count runs full. It's been a great job so far by the eight hole hitter. If he finds a way to get on base, this could spell for a huge inning. And he lays oh, off it. there, ball, ball four. four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin inning number three. Not in Ready now, Herman Marquez. And we'll likely see him square around to bunt. And the pitcher is, in fact, bunting here as he puts this one down. To second for one, on to first, and they turn the double play. Oh, that's the last thing you want to happen when you're trying to bunt a guy into scoring position. He got it down, but you have to deaden the ball, too. Otherwise, these infielders just eat it up and turn it into a double play. Here's Charlie Blackman now. And he'll take a changeup here for strike one. He popped out in his first trip. And now a curveball that bounces up to the plate. It's one and one. Third inning, no score to this point. Swing by Blackman, and it's hammered to right field. And gone! An absolute bomb. A solo shot down the line in right. Sixth home run on the season for him. And the Rockies are out to a 1-0 lead. Well, it's not too surprising to see him go bridge here. Two outs, base is empty. That's when you see a guy change their approach, and they just swing for the fences, trying to make the inning after all, and that's exactly what he did right here. Here's Daniel Murphy now. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. Both for one for him here in this one. A one count. Here's the pitch. Bullet back up the middle. And he will get there to make the running play, and that will end the inning. Rockies are on the board first thanks to this solo home run. We play two and a half. It's now one nothing Colorado. Settling in now, Ari Perez. He had a couple of hits in that ball game last night. Here comes the first pitch. 
Oh, and a less than impressive swing there to start the at bat. It's 0 and 1. I know we want to focus on the offense and how bad they've been so far, but can we give some love to the pitcher? He has had these guys in the rocking chair all day. Oh, and he'll try to take control of the inside part of the plate with the fastball as he backs him off a bit. Line toward right center. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Hey, right here, anytime the leadoff hitter gets on in front of the pitcher, it puts the defense on notice. You're going to see the third baseman creeping in. You're going to see the first baseman crashing, trying to get that out at second base. But if not, make sure of one. Into the box, Sandy Almanza. As the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball, 1 0. Line toward the alley in left center. And the pitcher's got himself a base hit. Hey guys, he's got to feel good about that right there. Well, you know, you're not expecting much on the offensive side. He said to heck with that. He fired the barrel right there. That was a bullet for a base hit. Stepping in now, Starling Marte, as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Perez at second. Almanza on at first with nobody out. A shot down the first baseline. And that's Bayan down the line in right field toward the corner. And they're not going to get him as he's in there to score. Dan, that's a nice RBI base hit on a hard grounder down the first baseline. If the first baseman's holding him right there, it's probably a double play, but not the case. No question about it, Hero. Sometimes it's a game of inches, and that ball hit were vacated with a first baseman. If he was holding on, that would probably have been one of those 3-6-3 three, three double plays. Instead, it's down the line for a base hit. Into the box now, Chris Taylor. As he'll take a breaking ball then off the plate for ball one. Well, you know, giving up three straight hits is bad enough, but now it looks like he's starting to nibble a little bit. It's hard not to when you're getting hit, but you don't want to put yourself in bad counts. Smoke on the ground up the middle. There's one on to first, a double play. Oh, that double play gave him a really good chance to minimize the damage oh, here. One run has come across, but now he just has to work to strand that runner at third. Would be pretty huge if he can do that. Coming to the plate now, Matt Chapman. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. He's set. Here it comes. A feeble swing that time. It's 0-1. Hey, he gets a pass right there for that ugly swing. He's been having a monster season. Take a step out of the box, regroup. He'll get right back in this AP. Now that ball's hit well. Deep down the left field line. Headed toward the foul pole. And he just couldn't keep that ball fair as it winds up a long foul ball. Breaking ball swung on and missed, and the side is retired. Marlins forced to settle for one. On now to the top of inning number four, all tied at one and one.
with Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian with you as Trevor Story digs into the right side of the batter's box to kick off the inning. Here's the first pitch to him. There's a knee high pitch that catches the zone. And two count. Here's the pitch. Just off the end of the bat, it's a foul ball, and he'll stick around. The next 0 2. Heading out towards shallow right. Reyes has a play, one away. Now Ready for another chance, David Dahl. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. He'll hold off on the slider to start the at bat. It's ball one. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's two and one. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Hit in the air out to left field. Soler is there. Two down. How about it? Third baseman. Vivi Gregorio. Digging in. Didi Gregorius. One for one after a single this first time up. Liner towards second. Leaps and makes a terrific catch. And with that, the side is retired. A ball ticketed for right center, but the ticket is revoked as he goes up to pull this one down. Don't go anywhere. More Tuesday Night Baseball after this. Now in the box, Franz Reyes. Leading off the fourth for the Marlins. Right fielder. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Breaks his bat as this one's popped up. And he'll steer clear of the flying debris to make the catch here for the first down. In is Jorge Soler. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. The knee buckler and he swings and misses at it. I mean this is the classic case of ambush tactics at its finest but this is getting a little ridiculous. I'd like to see some of these guys in the lineup work the count a little bit and find themselves on base and maybe drive this guy's pitch down. In there a base hit. So he'll reach base with one out here in the fourth and with that let's check out the league leaderboard in hits. And as you see there he sits in fourth place in that department in the National League. Into the box now, Garrett Cooper. He got called out on strikes his last time through. First delivery to him on the way. A breaking ball taken at the knees for strike one. This year against right-handed pitching, Cooper is hitting just over the benchmark 300 plateau. Source of pride for him, I'm sure. His batting average right now certainly signifies that this guy is having a great year. I'm very interested to see how this guy finishes up. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Bonifacio's in pursuit. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Now batting. Second baseman, Cattell Marte. And that'll bring in the middle infielder, Cattell Marte. Hit it hard, but lined out in his first at bat. He's ready. Here's the first offering. A swing and a miss at the good old Uncle Charlie. Soler, the runner at first with two gone.
And he turns on this one and yanks it foul and back out of play. Back to back breaking balls. He just missed that one right there, fouling it away. Do not expect a third. And another foul ball. That wasn't a terrible pitch right there, but if he's going to execute and get this swing and a miss, he's going to have to get that ball a little bit further down, maybe even potentially bounce the next one. The 0 2 once more. Line toward center field. Blackman is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. One left for Miami. Fifth inning coming up, tied at one. Stepping up now, Ryan McMahon comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. He set and the pitch. Just caught the inside corner with a sinker. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Yeah, it really does, Matt, but this offense isn't helping him too much. It sort of feels like the next team to score is going to win this thing. Here comes the nothing in two pitch. And a curveball that started low and broke lower, ball one. I don't know if that was a great take or he got fooled. He's certainly trying to play it off like he knew what was coming. You could bet he'd be on alert for that curveball again. The one two. Pulled toward right center field. Marte is under it. One out. Now batting. Right fielder. Marte. And that'll bring up Jorge Bonifacio. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Here's the pitch. Good breaking ball there. Had him frozen. Strike one. This guy's cruising along, pitching well as we enter the middle innings of this one. Less than 60% of his first pitches have been for strikes. If he could clean that up a little bit, he could really roll into the later innings in this one. Line drive to center field, but sadly for him, this will head straight to the center fielder as he puts it away without much trouble for the second out. Stepping into the box, Tony Walters threw a base on balls his first time up. First pitch of the at bat. There's a breaking ball over the outer half. Two out, nobody on. Lifted down the line and left. And this will wind up a foul ball. And he just misses with a curveball. Two and two to the Colorado catcher. The two two. Swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. One, two, three, go the Rockies. Halfway home, all even at one apiece. Up next from Miami, Ari Perez. He reached on a single in his first try. Here's the first pitch to him. Almost a worm burner as he misses on a low fastball. Ball one. The 1-0. -oh. Out in front as this is skied in the air to straightaway left. Story retreats to the outfield grass and he has it for round number one. From pitcher number 22, Sandy Almanza. At the plate, Sandy Almanza. He singled his last time up. First pitch on its way. Swing and a little blooper to center. And that'll get down for a base hit. 
Hey, I've been impressed with this guy. Not only has he thrown the ball well, but now he's mixing in a base hit late in the game, giving his manager options. Whether or not he wants to pinch run, keep him in there, go to the relief. I mean, he's opened up a whole weaponry box for the manager. Here's Starling Marte. As he'll take a look at the pitch too low, it's ball one. Two hits in two trips for him thus far. The 1 0. Misses, ball two. Well, you can see what he's trying to do right there. Double play situation. Two balls down in the zone, trying to get that ground ball. Didn't get them to bite at either one. Now he's behind in the count, 2-0. That's right. Like the two the 2-0 on the way. Hit hard up the middle. And that gets through for a one-out base hit. Well, d -Row, you have to love that if you're a hitter. You get ahead in the count, 2-0. Oh, you get a fastball right down the middle, and he sure knew what to do with it. Are you kidding me? You fight tooth and nail to get into count leverage at bats. 2-0, 3-1, 1-0 to buy yourself that fastball middle cut, and he didn't miss it. Standing in now, Chris Taylor, as he hits one on a line to left field but pretty much right at the left fielder as he takes it in for the second out. Up next for the Marlins, third baseman, Matt Chapman. Digging in once again, Matt Chapman. He'll look to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Grounder down the line at third. Now the 0-1. Hit to third. Taken in by Gregorius. Go on to first to be in time, and the Marlins can't cash in here, and that ends the inning. Marlins strand a pair. We played five full, tied at one aside. Into the box, Herman Marquez. He's set to lead us off in the sixth inning. From the stretch, sliders in for a strike. Fly ball to straightaway left. Soler is there, and he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Now batting, the center fielder, Charlie Blackman. Here's Charlie Blackman now. One for two in the ball game thus far. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up and down and in and out and try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. Oh, one pitch on its way. Here's a drive out toward left center field. On his way to second is Blackman. And he is in at second base with a one out double. And he obviously didn't let last night's hitless outing get to his head too much because that's his second hit of the ball game. This one a double. I'm sure he's feeling a lot better about the way he's going right now. Here's Daniel Murphy now. And yes, he'll take a look at ball one. Oh, for two for him to this point. And he misses again, 2-0. and oh. Well, both of those balls have been inside, so if I'm hitting, I'm looking for something I can get my arms extended on. Probably won't come back inside for a third time. And that is down, as that could be two bases. He pulls into second safely as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. 
So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there. Safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. And that brings in the power-hitting shortstop, Trevor Story. No hits to this point. Set to deliver the 0 and 1. Lifted down the line in left. And this will wind up a foul ball. Now another 0 2. Swing and a miss. And they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. It's so hard to hit when you're behind the count 0 and 2, right? You have to protect for the fastball. You have to look for the soft stuff down and away. You're really at a disadvantage when you fall behind 0 and 2. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder, David Dahl. And he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. Murphy at second with two down. A ball and a strike. That is such a tough pitch to lay off right there, but you have to find a way. There's nothing you're going to do with that low sinker except foul it into your shin or hit a ground ball to the left side. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. A little bouncer. Tang is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Rockies do get a run in the inning on this RBI double. Bottom of the sixth is straight ahead. It's now two to one Colorado. In now, Franz Reyes. He's batting cleanup in this one, but will get us started here in the inning if they want to wake up the bats. Right. Yeah, not much to get excited about with just a single notch on the scoreboard, but you have to give credit to where it's deserved. The pitching on the other side has been really impressive. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. This one's down to third. Gregorius is there. Throws in time, and that's out number one. For the Marlins. Left fielder, Jorge Soler. Digging in, Jorge Soler. A hit in two tries for him so far. First pitch coming, here it is. In on the hands a bit with the fastball, it's 1 0. Well, that two-seam fastball ran a little too much off the plate, but now that sets him up to work with something away and maybe even an off-speed pitch. The wind-up and the 1-0 pitch. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. As a pitcher, you got to feel good that you had him out front, even though he didn't pot commit on that one. It opens up a lot of weapons for you to go high fastball or throw even a better off-speed pitch. Line drive base hit. Got to be a little frustrated on the offensive side. Yeah, everybody's oh, getting man. knocks and the batting averages are falling right now, but nobody's coming up with that big runner in scoring position. Two out knock kind of feel that really is going to break this game open. In now, Garrett Cooper as he'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Ready with the nothing in one pitch. Hit on the ground to third. Gregorius has it. And they will not get him at first as he's able to leg out the throw. And this will go down as an E5 as you can see the exasperation on his face. 
Ready for another shot now. Patel Marte as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Check swing called strike 0 and 1. And that Colorado bullpen comes to life now with a lefty and a right hander up to throw. Comes set and the 0 1. And a breaking ball runs in and gets him. And I doubt there was any intent behind that. How about it? You always want to see the curve break a lot, but this one breaks a little bit too much. Comes all the way across the plate and nicks the batter. At the plate, Ari Perez. Yeah, guys, this is clearly one of the bigger at-bats of the ballgame so far. Yeah, Matt, base is loaded. They're looking to finally get that clutch hit that's kind of been elusive all day. They've had some hits, but they just haven't hit when it mattered. Pitch of the at bat on its way. Line drive to center field, and he will deliver one of the biggest at bats of the night. It's a base hit, and not in time as the run scores. Hey, that makes this one a lot more interesting here in the middle of innings. Bureau. After being down by one, big base hit drives in two. Yeah, that could be a huge knock right there, Dan, especially the way the bullpens have been throwing. They've been nasty. There's a lot of fuel out there, a lot of fire. Doesn't bode well for the offense. Now here comes the Rocky skipper up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. So he'll depart after five and a third innings of work and with no shot to win the decision. Chad Bettis takes the mound to try to get out of this mess. There are two on with only one away. Stepping in now, Sandy Almanza as a good changeup will get him to commit too early and it's strike one. A couple of singles to his credit thus far. Comes set with the 0-1. This is line to left. Uh-oh, he missed it. Throw into third, but a good job of staying with it as he throws his man out. It's a little surprising that they try to get the man at third there, but they are able to get the force out nonetheless. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Starling Marte, career numbers against Bettis. He's got five base hits in 19 tries. He's taken him deep once. Here comes the first pitch. Drilled on the ground is short. Story scoops it up. Throw on the second for the force, and the side is retired. So it's two runs on two base hits, one error, and a couple of men left. We're through six full. The Marlins lead this one three to two. Welcome back to South Florida. It's on to the seventh inning with the Marlins on top, and it's a good time to check out our game summary through the first six innings of play. Now at the plate, Didi Gregorius. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. No balls and a strike to count. The 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss at a ball down. I got to say, his command of the corners in this start has been pretty exceptional. He's mixed east and west really well, and it's a big reason why he's had One success. Ball. A two ball strikes. and two strikes to Didi Gregorius. The 
one two. Ooh, he saws him off with that one. And the leadoff man in the inning will get the job done here. It's an infield single. I know it wasn't pretty right there, Dan, but that has to frustrate the pitcher. Leadoff guy, anytime he gets on, usually creates a problem. And you know what, Dero, it's especially tough when you get as late in the game as we are right now. Anytime you get that leadoff guy on and have that pitcher start pitching out of the stretch, it always puts more stress on that pitcher pitching out of the stretch. Here's Ryan McMahon now. He's running. Hard hit ball to second. And they tag him out, but this will work as a sort of a sacrifice as the runner moves up. Standing in, Jorge Bonifacio. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Come set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Swing and a little tapper. Now the 0 1. Breaking ball in for a strike. All right, as a hitter right here, you got to know if he's throwing you tough pitches. He does not want to miss over the heart of the plate. That's when you step out, regroup, maybe sit over the heart of the plate, knowing that he's trying to execute so well, he might miss right down the middle. Got him on a good slider there. Swung on and missed as he's down on strikes for the second time tonight. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. That'll bring up Tony Walters. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. Very tight ball game. Three to two our score in inning number seven. Aye. A ball and a strike. You see there the pitch count is up to 88. And at this point in the game, that's a good place to be. So I think we'll see him stay out there for at least a little while longer. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside. One and two now. And that one just missed outside. Well, all of the umpires in the seats thought that would strike three, and they weren't far off, but I think that was a good call. Looked to be just a bit outside. Wouldn't bite on a good sinker that time that missed. Gregorius stands at second with two gone. Bottom dropped out on him, and that's a strikeout. And the throw to first ends the inning. Back to back strikeouts keep them out of danger. Back with more here on a Tuesday night after this. Stepping into the box, Chris Taylor. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Chris Taylor. First delivery to him on the way. Couldn't wait back. A swing and a miss. He goes the other way as this is hit in the air toward the gap in right center. Blackman is under it. One away. Up next for the Marlins. Third baseman. Kaufman. Stepping in, Matt Chapman. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. First pitch of the at bat. Very weakly on the ground, but it gets foul. Three runs, nine hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And a breaking ball runs in and gets him. And I doubt there was any intent behind that. Yeah, I can hear the crowd murmuring now, wondering if he hit him on purpose. But hey, us pitchers need to be able to throw inside, especially when facing hitters as dangerous as he is. Pretty sure this one just got away from him. And hey, that's part of the game. 
So now it'll be the four hole hitter, Franz Reyes. He's set, here it comes. Now this is chopped foul to home plate, it's 0-1. The 0 1 pitch. Oh, he's got him in the palm of his hand now. It's 0 and 2. After that swing, you just got to reset yourself. You still have a strike to work with, and you, you can't be thinking about how silly you just looked on that last pitch. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And a swing and a miss, so the NL's leading hitter is set down on strikes, and there are two gone. You hear that phrase, climb the ladder all the time? And that's pretty much what he did right there. When you change the hitter's eye level with each pitch and that at bat, it becomes very hard for him to adjust and put the bat on the ball. He made that strikeout look real easy. In is Jorge Soler. Now, despite the matchup against some typically formidable pitching, he has already turned in a multi-hit performance. That's why this guy's an absolute monster. He doesn't discriminate. You put a good guy out on the mound, he finds a way to work his knocks in, and he feasts on the 3-4-5. Hot shot on the ground is short, and that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Marlins lead one. They're up 3-2. to two. Number seven will pinch hit here, and he's the potential tying run. Number seven. Went about halfway there, but it's a called strike regardless. Comes in with an average of 265, two home runs, and a dozen RBIs. And here's a curveball in the dirt that time for a ball. One and one. Now a bunt attempt here. Chapman has it. Throw to first in time, and the bunt attempt is foiled. Now back. Center fielder. Charlie Blackman. Here's Charlie Blackman now. Here comes the first pitch. Here's a strike. Looking at strike two, a fastball that catches the inside corner. Even though he let that one go, you know that's the kind of pitch he likes to take a big hack at. Not too many power hitters that don't like a stomach high fastball, so he's probably not throwing that one again. And on 0 2, he misses with a fastball. You know, Matty, I'm not surprised by that pitch. Raise the eye level a little bit. Maybe we get something bouncing in the dirt right here. Able to protect the plate with two strikes, and he'll see another one. This one, everything we could have hoped for. Three to two in inning number eight. And he struck him out. And that's eight strikeouts thus far. Eighth inning here from South Florida as you get a look at the line score to this point. The hometown Marlins leading this one as they look to send this crowd home happy. Trying to pick things up where we left off. Daniel Murphy. He's set and the pitch. Nope. And that one stayed too low apparently. Two outs, nobody on, but a base runner here feels like it would really change the complexion of the inning. Yeah, Matt, that's a great point. If this two-hitter finds a way on, it really sets up the very good middle part of the order to do some damage after all. The 2-0. Hit hard back up the middle. A dive, but he can't knock it down. It's through for a base hit. That's the cat and mouse of the game right there. You find yourself count leverage. You think you're getting a heater. He throws an off-speed pitch, and you're still able to execute. That fires me up right there. Now with the play, Trevor Story. 0 for 3 to this point. 
Yeah, not his game so far. He's such a good hitter. We all kind of expect him to pick up two or three hits most of the time. That's not really how baseball works, though. First pitch on its way. Missed with a slider. This is where you got to take stock in the situation. Adjust your batting gloves and realize you need a gapper to score this guy from first. If nothing less, pass the baton to the guy behind you and keep the line moving. He's ready. Here's the 1 0. Lays off again and it's 2 0. Back to back pitches, they've gone away. Do you tell yourself as a hitter he wants to come in right here? I don't think so. I think he's trying to find that outside corner and adjust accordingly. Jammed in there as this is rolled out to short. And they'll go the short way to retire the side. Rockies strand one. They trail three to two. Scott Ober was on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Riding in once again, Garrett Cooper. He reached base on an error and later came around to score last time up. Cooper. From the stretch. And not the greatest of starts to the at bat as he reaches for one out of the zone for strike one. Ball sent back up the middle, gloved by Murphy, and that's the first down. The batter number four, second baseman, Cattell Marte. Digging in now, Cattell Marte. He's got to be looking for vengeance after getting plunked in his last at bat. First offering on its way. 4-1. Three runs, nine hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. This is pulled into right, and that's into the outfield for a one out base hit. Cutting it close here, but he comes through in the eighth to extend his hitting streak. Yeah, and he was staring at his last at bat right there. Probably his last at bat. Would have been tough to get him another A.B. in this one, but he's able to get it done. Hey, better late than never, and I'm sure when he walked into that batter's box right there, he's thinking, this very well could be my last A.B. of this game, so if I'm going to keep this streak alive, I'm going to have to do it right now. Not going to get him as he's right second. 90 feet is a big deal when you're talking about a one-run game, so... That's a little risky, but hey, sometimes you have to be aggressive and force the other team to stop you. Marte leads off second with one gun in the inning. Now a swing and a miss, and things are not looking real promising here. Down 0-2. Oh, man, he just tied him up in knots right there. A pause, and the 0-2. Soft liner towards short. And he overshoots his first baseman as it's over his head. And now this ball's going to wind up out of play. And now the compound matters even further. And don't forget, on a ball thrown out of play, the rule says that the runner gets the base he was running to, plus one more. Vilma will get a chance with a runner in scoring position here as he'll pinch hit now with one away. A throw behind the runner at second, and he's back easily.
hit on the ground down the first baseline. But a foul ball here, 0 and 1. Trying to add some padding to their lead in the form of that run standing out there at second base. as he ran that two-seamer right by him for the second out. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? Mark. I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. From the stretch, here's the pitch. And he gives this one a pretty good ride down the left field line. And foul, though it had the home run distance. 0-1 count and the pitch. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. But it bangs off the out-of-town scoreboard. As he arrives at second without a play, as a run will score on the play as well. Hey, d -Row, that's a big RBI right there to stretch this lead to three. Takes a lot of pressure off your pitcher going into the bottom part of the inning. Yeah, Dan, no doubt. As an offense, all you're trying to do is put your pitchers in position to be successful. Giving them that three-run cushion has to make you feel good. Into the box, Chris Taylor. And he puts it on the ground to second. Throw in time, and the side is retired. So two runs on two hits, one error in the inning, and a runner left on. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Marlins five and the Rockies two. Back now under the roof at Marlins Park as we get a look outside at the bright lights of Miami. Trey Guerrero comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Trey Guerrero. And that will bring up the speedy outfielder, David Dahl. He's hit less in three at-bats to this point. They look like they're up against it here. Down three on the road, trying to come back against the closer. And we kick off the ninth inning with a swinging strike here. Nothing in one. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. And, and a fastball just a bit high. This is a big out to get right here. This is their best hitter. He's a great hitter, and he's a guy that kind of spark plug. He gets this team going. So if I'm on the mound right now, you really want to try to get this guy out to hopefully keep them from getting a potential big inning started. And he'll take this to the bag himself. One gone here in the ninth. There's a look at the final line for the Marlins starting pitcher, and he was really in command on the mound throughout the evening. Riding in, Didi Gregorius. He's two for three and looking for more here. First delivery to him on the way. Hey. Tough slider that just catches the corner for a strike. One out, nobody on. Fastball down near the shoe tops. Hit sharply on the ground, but a foul ball. One and two the count now. The one two. And he'll stay alive here as this is chopped foul at the plate. It'll remain one and two. Can't imagine he comes back with a third breaking ball. That hitter looked like he timed that one up pretty well and just missed it, fouling it away. To two balls and two strikes now. Bases are empty, one man out. And he tries to get him to reach for it, but it stays outside. Three and two. Three. 
Still three balls and two strikes. The eighth pitch of the at bat. Popped him up. Chapman in foul ground. And this will land foul. Hey, he's got four foul balls in this A.B. right here. He's really making his pitcher grind for everything. And he finally wears him down here as he strikes him out after a nine-pitch at bat. That swing tells me he was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two-strike approach either. Here's Ryan McMahon now. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. The 1 0. Is laid off, put in there for strike one. A nice adjustment right there for him to get on top of that baseball and drive it to the corner. The first pitch he obviously tried to overthrow, got under it, and it sailed on him a little bit. One and two now as that one's fouled off. A crowd in excess of 37,000 come to their feet. Hit down the third baseline. Scooped up on the backhand. Throw on to first and the ball game is over. And that save number 33 on the season for him. Matching my career best for a season. The difference is he still has a chance to notch number 34. Another nice outing from him. 5-2 the final score tonight. Miami wrote an important sixth inning to victory in this one. Sandy Almanza hangs win number 11 on his line as he turns in eight strong innings of work. Trey Guerrero closes the door for the save, his 33rd of the year. So that just about does it. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way on over to theshownation.com. Here now is our final line score tonight. First for the victorious Miami Marlins. Five runs on 11 hits. No errors. 11, nine runners on hit. For the Rockies, two runs, six hits, two errors. They left four runners on hit. Time of the ball game, three hours and seven minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We remind you to please drive home safely.